So I want to say a little bit more about uh, sediment water mixtures. So the sediment um, mixing with the water changes the characteristic of the water. And when we were talking about turbidites, we talked about how the density of the flow um, is higher when you have sediment mixed in with the water. And if we go back to thinking about the Reynolds number, we have the Reynolds number is the flow speed times the flow depth times the density over the viscosity of the flow. So when your density is higher, your Reynolds number is higher, and the flow is more turbulent. So almost always sediment water mixtures are more turbulent um, at, if they have a certain amount of sediment in them. And because the Reynolds number is higher, because density is higher. However, we can also have changes in uh, viscosity. So this density makes the Reynolds number higher and more turbulent, but sometimes the viscosity of the fluid increases if you mix sediment and water. So the viscosity increases if there are a lot of clay minerals. in clay grain sizes. All right, so that has to do with the cohesiveness of clay minerals. Remember uh, with our Holstrom diagram we have our grain size and our flow speed and we have this characteristic here where we have the clay grain sizes are hard to erode. Right. That cohesive behavior here is the same is equivalent. It also produces an increase of, of viscosity. So if you have a lot of clay in the sediment water mixtures, um, then the f the flows are less turbulent because the viscosity an increase in viscosity reduces the Reynolds number. Um, and if you have enough clay in the flow, sometimes the like mud flows can actually be laminar. So uh, if you mobilize a huge amount of, of mud that's, that's behaving as sort of a viscous fluid as opposed to as, as class or something like that, you end up with this, this very thick flow. And it's one of the reasons mud flows are sometimes very damaging uh, to people's houses is because they don't go and flow around the house because they don't have, they have so much internal friction and they're behaving as a highly viscous flow. They'll just push the whole, the whole house over. Okay. So um, the sediment water mixtures are really interesting in terms of how the laminar and turbulent behavior uh, uh, varies um, depending on how much sediment is present and what the grain size of that sediment actually is. And then there's a second thing that's really important for sediment water mixtures and that's that the grains, usually when we've been talking about grains, we've been talking about them uh, in isolation. Say we have a grain on a bed. But in sediment water mixtures, you, the grains are really densely packed. So you have water uh, between them here. And usually when we've been talking about sediment transport, we've talked about, say, the Bernoulli effect picking up a grain. But one of the things that happens in these really dense flows is that the grains will collide with each other. All right? So if you have, a, if this grain is moving up, and it collides with this one, it'll push, this grain will move up, and it'll collide with this one, and it might end up moving that way, or maybe it collides with this one. So the grains can actually be transported much more easily because they're colliding against each other, and 
the the energy that the grains have are being transmitted to other grains instead of to the the friction in the water and the flow. And so when you have these sediment water mixtures, you get a lot of these grain-grain interactions. And one of the things that happens in this particular case is that it's, it's, the, uh, it's very difficult to sort out the grain sizes. And so usually what happens is that the, the grains that get deposited are the ones that interact and hit the bottom of the flow and it's not so much determined by grain size it's just their location in the flow so grains uh, closer to the bottom are deposited from flows like this particularly as they start to slow down um, and that's irrespective of size So if we think back to the Velma A um, facies, which is that bottom one that is massive, that is what's happening to get that deposit. The, the initial part of the turbidite has so much sediment in it um, when it's depositing the, the Velma the A part that those grains are colliding and you're not sorting them very well. It's true that the larger grains are still closer to the bottom of the flow, so there are more of them. Um, uh, more of them do get deposited, but it's not very well sorted. And the collisions of the grains stop the bed forms from uh, being created. The bed forms need rolling and saltating grains to uh, create the ripples or even the upper planar lamination. When you have too many grain collisions, it disrupts those bed forms. So basically the Bauma A facies Um, is a, a suggests a dense uh, sediment water mixture. Thanks for watching.